so of course we're going to put this into human terms which are not going to be correct that's why I tell people all the time, people get mad, they say, well, that contactee's obviously lying. I said, but they're obviously a contactee. I said, so if they've had experiences, but they're lying, what's the problem? And I said, what they're doing is, is they're, 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 in order to make this work in their own lives, they're incorporating this whole big realm and story around it so that uh -huh. it'll fit into whatever it is that they believe in. And, well, of course, like, that's wrong, but, you know, what can you, you do? Can't, you can't acquire, not, you can't just, there's a theory that if your mind is pure, and you come into direct contact with the object, you know, something out there, that you can have full knowledge, you know, that you can, like, embrace it or it will merge with you or whatever. There's some kind of metaphysical mumbo-jumbo yeah. theory, right? Well, the fact is, is that knowledge is based on a structure, a system, preparation. For example, if somebody who knows nothing about cars or automobiles is encounters in a pure state of mind an automobile engine, all they'll see is a pile of metal and pipes and wires. Yep, that's all we're going to see. But if you have somebody who is a trained engineer, he has a structure, a framework, and he encounters this automobile engine, he knows exactly what it is, what it does, and how it works. Yep. It's the same thing with paranormal phenomena, with channeling phenomena. You have to have a structure. You have to have a framework. You have to have theories that, you know, on which to base your knowledge. And you also have to be open enough to say, that all of this could change. I can throw all of this out the window with that additional piece of data that changes everything. And, and it will, and it could be anything. That, look, yeah. could, I yeah. tell people all the time, don't, don't, don't get your mindset. Don't become too dogmatic in your views. I said because I've been in this field 25 years, and I can tell you myself at least a dozen times I have changed my mind based on new ideas or new evidence that's come into play. Yeah. And, and I and I get accused of you know because sometimes you know I change my mind. I write something. And it's based on everything I know at the moment. Yeah, at the and moment. then six months later, I've learned something else, and, I, and I'll write something, and I'll say, well, formerly, you know, this is what I thought, and now, you know, I learned this, and so this, is, and then I get accused of, of changing my story. No, you, know? you changed your mind, and, 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 and I've said that, I've been accused of that, and somebody told me one time, well, I heard you five years ago say this, and now you're saying this. I said, because five years ago, I didn't have all the pieces of that puzzle. I said, now well, I listen, do. The only people on this planet who are absolutely certain are psychopaths. Yeah, you're not kidding about that one either. But hold that hold that thought for a minute because we're gonna have to take a quick break here so we can we can let our, our break time get into the rerun queue. Guys, we're gonna be back in about ten minutes. I want everyone to please stay tuned to UFO Undercover. I'm your host Joe Montaldo. I'm speaking I'm sitting and speaking with Laura Knight um Yachik. Yeah, <laughs> and I just had that name perfect too. Yeah chick, I'm sorry y'all uh, I I'm I'm trying not to mess her name up because I want y'all to remember who she was. Uh, but we'll be back in a few minutes. So everyone, please stay tuned and listen to the music. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Welcome to UFO Undercover with your host, Joe Montaldo. Good afternoon and welcome back everyone to UFO Undercover. Like Natasha says, I'm your host, Joe Montaldo. I'm speaking I'm sitting and speaking with Laura Nayachik this evening about her book, uh, High Strangeness. And actually the conversation's been very well, so I hope everybody's enjoying the show. For anyone who, who's tuning in later catching us, this show will re air on Wednesday. Uh, at its regular scheduled time. This is actually a pre-record that we're letting the audience get a little taste of what's going on. Sorry, guys. As usual, the breaks are where the good stuff happens. <laughs> but y'all can't hear those because, uh, you know, you know, Laura, I tell them all the time, it's a shame we don't record the breaks because some of the conversations at the breaks are, are better than the actual program. <laughs> but like I said, it's usually stuff that can't be put on the air, you know. Yeah. It's stuff that we're discussing either in research or, or stuff that's just not ready for prime time, as I like to say. But, um... You know, we, we, we've been talking about a lot of stuff today, and it's really funny to me how people get caught in particular ruts or they break out of particular ruts, you know, like religion itself. Uh, they just get stuck, and they, and they can't see beyond that. And, you know, I, I like I said, I have no problem with worshiping or, or, or being spiritual or anything along those lines. It's just um, I don't see where religion is actually serving a purpose in mainstream society anymore other than causing problems. 
I mean, let's be honest. We can, we can say whatever we want to say about the Middle East and the United States, but basically what's going on over there, this is two different, uh, two different idiotities here. I mean, we've got the Muslim world and the Christian world, and they hate each other. <laughs> and I don't, I don't see this changing anytime soon, and I, I hate to say but you know, um, there was a study done uh, about 50 years ago. Um, 75% of all the major wars on this planet happened over religion. The other 25% happened either over land or women. <laughs> I was kind of like, huh? The women one threw me for a loop, and then uh, someone reminded me uh, about, um, oh, um, Helen of Troy. Yeah, yeah, and Helen. Then there was uh, something about one of the queens of England as well, and I was like, well, yeah, I guess, I guess that is true. And uh, but it, it, it's strange, it, it, it's strange in itself. But what can we do? Well, but, I think I think the need for I think that uh, many people have a need to make contact with the transcendent. I think yeah. that's the urge for religious experience. And that is taken and twisted by uh, man-created religions uh, and, and twisted and used and thwarted for you know personal uh, agendas or purposes. Like they, they use people's urge for this transcendent experience to get them involved in a religion and then they begin to gradually degrade the religion, and then they use the adherence of the religion to, you know, in the name of this God, in order to have this transcendent experience, you must go kill these people over there, because they're, they are threatening your transcendence, is what I think happens. But, but this need that people have is very real, and I think, I think we should honor it in a certain sense, because... Uh, there's there's a lot of power in people getting together and having some kind of a uh, a ritual communion, so to speak. And it doesn't have to be just enacting certain things in a mima sort of way. I mean, an example is there there are groups of women who get together now who talk about their abuse experiences, yeah. and and this might even work for people who've had abduction experiences. And they get together and they build a bonfire, and they talk about their experiences, each one of them, and they and each of the others acknowledges that person's experience. They may write something down about the experience uh, on a piece of paper or on, uh, you know, have some object, and they go around a circle, and then at a certain point, then they will take that paper, and they'll put it in the fire, and they'll burn it, and, you know, maybe they'll sing before, sing afterwards, you know, to get themselves harmonized together, to sort of connect their chakras together. And it can be a very moving and transcendent experience, and it can have a lot of relief, and it enables them to go on with their lives, people who've had very painful and troubling experiences. So when you have people who have, uh, you know, who have a difficult time dealing with life on a day-to-day -day basis, because let's face it, reality sucks. I mean, <laughs> yeah, when, exactly. when, you, when you face reality, and this is, some, this is one of the little things we just mentioned on the break, you know, it, reality is depressing. You get depressed. I mean, there's just no question about it. And you have to have some uh, way of making contact with that part of yourself that, that inducts creative energy into your being so that you can continue to go on and deal with this reality that's being run by psychopaths you know, to your detriment. I, that's, that's how I feel about religion. I think that I think the spiritual um, mutually agree agreed uh, ceremonial it's, it's a, let me let me get rid of the word ritual ceremony ceremony for groups is very very powerful and I think I think that uh, it does. I if mean, we could find rational ways to deal and not a set uh, of actions that somebody else prescribes for you find out what works for you for your group create your own ceremony and every situation you know, could have its own ceremony. You, you make it up as you go along. It has to be meaningful in a, in a dynamic and interactive way with the universe in which you live. Well, no, it, it, it's a good point. And, you know, it, it's, it's like, you know, when I was young and, and would see the suggestion or the power of prayer, um, for lack of a better way of saying it. But, you know, I've seen, I've seen sick people get healed. I've seen other things happen. And so I know group group consciousnesses can affect uh, our everyday reality and they can oh, affect yeah. our own everyday reality. And and I know the need to believe is strong in humans. Uh, I don't know if we necessarily need to believe something. Well, we need to know something. We need to know that there's something higher than ourselves is what yeah. it comes down to. Um, I'm not sure why we need to know that there's something higher than ourselves, but we do. I mean, literally, we need to know 
that there is more to the universe than just us and, and what's going on this planet. And it's a fundamental basic need for all humans. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't matter what walk of life you come from or, or where you are or what you're doing. It's something that we all need. Uh, it's, it's just a, a need that we have to have and we have to fill. I'm not sure where it comes from. It's almost like, you know, Lord, it's almost like there's a void we're trying to fill. Uh, well, I, th I think what it is, partly is that number one we need to feel this connectedness to other human beings yeah. we're doing something together that's the first thing and then as i was mentioning earlier i think that there is some part of us that extends into the into a higher reality and so that part of us that is in that higher reality also connects with parts of the other people that are in the higher reality and it and it helps us to induct energy into ourselves uh, and so, of course, we're going to put this into human terms, which are not going to be correct. That's why I tell people all the time, people get mad. They say, well, that contact is obviously lying. I said, but they're obviously a contact. Yes, it's because they've had experiences, but they're lying. What's the problem? And I said, what they're doing is, is they're, 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 in order to make this work in their own lives, they're incorporating this whole big realm and story around it so that uh -huh. it'll fit into whatever it is that they believe in. And, well, of course, like, that's wrong. For example... If somebody who knows nothing about cars or automobiles is encountered in a pure state of mind an automobile engine, all they'll see is a pile of metal and pipes and wires. Yep, that's all we're going to see. Long, but you know, what can you, you do? Can't, you can't acquire, not, you can't just, there's a theory that if your mind is pure and you come into direct contact with the object, you know, something out there, that you can have full knowledge, you know, that you can, like, embrace it or it will merge with you or whatever. There's some kind of metaphysical mumbo-jumbo yeah. theory, right? Well, the fact is, is that knowledge is based on a structure, a system, preparation. 